What's up guys? Adam Hinkle here from Tactical Bassin. I wrote a couple articles uh, a while back about shore fishing, walking the bank. Extremely effective. Um, I wanted to wanted the next part of that be to be a video uh, talking about what you're looking for on topo maps because that was the second article I wrote was pulling out topo maps and using them to your advantage, breaking down lakes, looking and seeing exactly what you want to fish before you even show up. Um, I'm going to talk about what you're looking for, points, flats, creek channels, little high spots, um, accessibility. Um, a lot of times there's going to be roads that will show on the map that you can park your car, walk right down to the bank and make a cast without having to walk two, three miles, um, saving you tons of time. Um, wanted to break that kind of break that stuff down a little bit, um, show you what I look for in a map, and hopefully you guys can use it the same way that I do. So let's get started. Okay, so we'll start with lake number one. This is Lake Kawea. I've actually never fished this lake before, so it'll be interesting. When I do fish this lake in the future, um, I may show up and this lake is completely covered in trees. Uh, the shoreline is totally covered in trees, and I may not be able to make the cast that I think I can make by just looking at this map at first glance. Um, but let's start with, uh, let's start with this area back in here. Okay, so you've got a creek channel that comes in at the back of this cove right here. Um, runs all the way out here. This is the shoreline, high water level, running out to 10 foot here. These are 10 foot interval lines. You got a flat here, a flat here, and you've got a creek channel that runs all the way around here. Right here, this creek channel makes a 90 degree turn. These creek channel bends are always good fish areas, big fish areas. Um, with the creek, with the creek channel bend next to a flat here, I mean this is from zero to ten foot all the way out here, and you can see how fast it breaks into looks like thirty right here, because uh, this is your twenty foot interval line. Looks like the creek channel is all the way out in thirty foot here. You've got a road right here as well. This highway one ninety eight. And there's a little pull-off right here. You can walk straight down to where that creek channel is. On the opposite side, you also have a point. This is a good area. Um, this area right here, this is a cove. You've got a creek channel that runs in. You're going to get a lot of runoff here. You've got feeder creeks coming in on the sides. Um, you've got a giant flat out here. You're not going to be able to fish this flat effectively from, from this area here. But the flat extends all the way to the other side. And you've got a little, it's kind of a point that sticks out right here. There's a high spot. You've got a point that kind of sticks out this way. And that point meets the creek channel where this flat's at. These fish will move up into this flat. And they're, if they're up on the flat feeding, you can catch them right here. But they're going to be ambushing right around this high spot area. Um, a lot of this stiff stuff over here, steeper water. It's kind of a flat over here. There's, there's steeper shorelines here. Um, this is a good area right here where the creek channel runs up close to the shoreline, real steep with a flat nearby. That's the kind of stuff you're looking for. Let's go to lake number two. Um, this is San Vicente. This is a lake that's actually closed right now. It's supposed to open, I think, in 2015 or somewhere around there. They're building this dam up over 100 foot taller than it is existing. Uh, this is your high water mark. This is what we call toll road arm. In the back of Toll Road, Toll Road holds a lot of big fish. Everybody who fishes San Vicente knows Toll Road holds big ones. Um, you've got, in the back of this cove, you've got a creek channel that runs all the way out here. You can see it bending where, where these line, contour lines come to a point. That's where the creek channel is running. It's bending all the way around this way. So, here's a big flat. This big feeding flat, and they'll spawn on this flat as well. That where this high spot comes out and where the creek channel runs around it, this area, prime, prime stuff for big fish. Um, this is one of the best areas on the lake for giants. Um, a lot of ambush areas, there's trees out here, you wouldn't know it from the topo maps. That's what a lot of topo maps are lacking is, is showing you that there's trees out in areas or boulders or, you know, because there's scattered boulders out here as well on this flat. But <clears throat> the flat is what draws these fish. They'll feed on it, they'll spawn on it, there's deep water access nearby, and there's an ambush point right here in this corner by where the high spot is. This is the stuff that you don't want to look for, fish in the bank. See here's the high water line. See how far apart 
these interval lines are. These are five foot interval lines. This is a huge shoreline. I mean, I'll zoom out. You can see this whole lake. And I'll zoom back in. This is a big shoreline right here. Five feet, five feet, five feet, five more. And here's high spots out here. Yeah, they'll feed on this flat, but this flat goes so far out, they're not gonna hug the bank on this thing. They're gonna be way out in here. You can't even reach, you'll never reach the fish that are out in this area feeding. Um, these fish will stack up out on the high, high, high spots. You can't effectively, effectively reach fish on this shoreline. You wanna look for spots like this, where the, the interval lines are a lot stacked closer together. You have deep water access close to you. You don't wanna look for the interval lines that are that far apart. Because here's five foot, 10 foot, 15, 20 foot of water. See how far that is? That's probably 40, 50 yards. You can't make a 40, 50 yard cast. Not, you know, if you can make a 40, 50 yard cast, you're gonna be fishing in effective water for about 10 feet, and that is it. Um, so you're not looking for contour lines that are that spread apart. You're looking for stuff that's closer together. This is a lake that I grew up fishing. I know this thing like the back of my hand. Um, let's see here, spot number one. This is a long, long point, kind of similar to what I showed you in, at San Vicente. Um, and this point here, you'll never fish, you catch the fish that are out here on the end. You'll never be able to reach them walking the bank. But you can stand at the point, on this point here, and make your cast out to the deep water on the sides of the point. These fish are ambushing on the sides of these things. Um, spot number two, this is pretty similar. Um, another long point, but this one's more flat. This one has a big flat here on this area, and you'll be, be able to fish this flat during the summer when they're ambushing, well, winter too, when they're ambushing trout, pushing them up onto the flat. Notice the interval lines are, you know, not too spread apart, except for out here where the point extends out. But they're ambushing on the sides of this thing, out, up on the flat and on the side of this point, especially on the side of this point. Um, they really, really stack up in that area. And spot number three. There are more big fish in this area than anywhere else on the lake, I believe. Um, it's been proven. They're, the lake record's in this area. I caught a 16 pounder off of this point. I caught a 10 pounder off of this point. And a friend of mine caught a 17 off of this point. Another friend of mine caught a 13 pounder. Um, there's a little fence here out on this flat. So there's been tons and tons of big fish caught out of this cove. And the reason why, see the launch ramp here, the trout get dumped in here. And for some reason, they always end up back in the back of this cove. It, for, I don't know why, but they always end up here. Maybe it's that the, the, the bass are stacked up under the boat dock here and they push them that direction, but I believe that the trout just flow that area. There's deep water over here by the dam. There's more oxygen. That could be why they go this direction and they just get pinned back into this cove. Um, but the trout get pinned in here. Plus, you have a fence that runs all the way out to 20 or so foot of water. You have three ambush points here. You have one giant flat here. You've got a real super shallow flat here where they can really pin trout up in there. And then you got deep water running out here. Um, and there's a point on both of these main lake points. I mean, it's just 100% the best big fish spot on the lake. There's way too many ambush points, deep water access, and it's close to where these trout get put in. Um, I spent a lot of time looking for big fish in here. All right guys, so now that I've broken these things down for you, um, you should have a better idea of how to read a topo map, what you're looking for. Um, creek channels, points, flats, all of that. Um, obviously you're not gonna know where all the boulders are at without being on the lake from a boat with electronics. But the contour is what really matters. The, the contour is what draws these fish, ambush points. Um, so the next video I wanna do, I'm gonna go to the lake that I grew up fishing and I'm gonna walk out to the, some of these spots that I showed you on this map, and I'm gonna make the cast that I make. I'm gonna show you exactly how I'm fishing these spots. That's the most important part. Figuring out where you wanna fish, and the angles that you wanna take, and making a cast out to deep water, and pulling it up to the ambush point where that fish is gonna be sitting, waiting for something to, to approach them. Um, that's the most important part of it, is the cast that you're making. So. I'm going to go out, make the cast. Hopefully you guys will tune in and learn something from it.
Thanks, guys.